Hello, Casey here. I want to talk about extending your adventures with an Agile 28 gallon auxiliary fuel tank insulation. I'm going to talk through the insulation and some of the challenges I had with it, but really the big benefits, and that is to get out there, really get out there, get far out there and explore. And I mean, off the beaten path, away from the roads, out in the middle of nowhere, where you can really go far places. In this photo here, there is no way I could have done this without at least a 300 mile range off the highway. And so the 28 gallon fuel tank or additional fuel tanks is the only way to do this. And also when you get out there in these places that you really want to hang out in because they're so pretty, you just want to stay. And sometimes there's all sorts of things that come about. It's weather. Weather comes about and it, and it, and it may be whether it's a, a dust storm or or it's rain or a snowstorm or it's really cold or really hot somewhere else you want you're going to head to and you want to delay uh, your your tr your transfer to that place you can now stay longer with this auxiliary fuel tank and also supply your heating should that be needed and basically stop and stay and watch the rainbows or enjoy the sunrise um, and in some cases too you just don't want to stop you may be where the fuel prices are really high and so you want to keep driving till where the fuel prices are lower before you refuel or you're just in the middle of a really uh, nice drive, a podcast, a book, or you're enjoying your lunch on the road or something like that. So these are reasons why you might want to extend your fuel tank and the fuel tank range. And, and sometimes also you're just carrying a lot of weight. For me, I carry a lot of food and I mean a lot of food. Uh, I have a very large refrigerator. I believe it's about seven and a half cubic feet in total between fridge and freezer. And so, yes, I can carry a lot of food and so much food um, that I can carry two whole frozen pies in the freezer and still have room for probably about 10 more in there if I were stacking them up. So pretty great. And not only can I carry the pies, but I can also enjoy a uh, heated up pie with fresh whipped cream while driving down the road because I don't have to stop and refuel. Uh, as seen here and sometimes you're carrying you know heavy things like carbon fiber mountain bikes kind of joking about that one but you get out there and you go for a ride and you're like you know what this is so pretty I don't want to have to go get fuel I want to stop here and enjoy the sunset and enjoy a beverage and I'm just going to stay the night and not have to worry about like getting back out to the road I can keep exploring so I'm going to walk through how I installed the 28 gallon auxiliary fuel tank from Agile, what I think of it, and also the benefits I get from having a full tank of gas. The Agile 28 gallon auxiliary fuel tank comes pretty well packaged, and this is what it looks like when it's all done. It tucks up very nicely into the spare tire uh, mount location. Do you need to move, relocate your spare tire? I put mine in my rear door with an L. Uh, rear tire door carrier ladder, and uh, it works fantastic. I love it. Uh, the Alzo tank itself is about 65 pounds. The other components, pump and wiring, everything else is about another 10 pounds. When you add that up, you're about 75 pounds of weight. However, uh, you're also removing about 11 pounds or so with the spare tire carrier. Obviously, the spare tire itself just relocates. So ultimately, it's about a 65 pound weight add just for the tank. There's obviously the additional 28 gallons of fuel. Diesel weighs in at a little over seven gallons, seven pounds per gallon. So you're, you, you certainly can add a, a, you know, a good amount of weight uh, to the van. Okay, let's go into the insulation. Uh, the instructions are decent. You get these wiring and plumbing diagrams are pretty basic. And then they do also provide these basic diagrams. But as you can see here, the first real step is remove factory fuel tank from vehicle. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are some challenges in there. And same with the remove the factory fuel pump. Uh, it does unscrew, the fuel pump unscrews fairly easily, but putting it back on is not so easy. There's a, an O-ring there that did get a little dislodged when I pulled it out and it has a flat spot on it that has to be up against the uh, inner ring of that fuel tank. That was a little challenging. Also, when I removed the fuel tank, you know, loosening up this bolt here that holds the fuel filler and making sure that gets pulled through. Really, two people makes it a lot easier. So if you are gonna do this insulation, a couple of people really helps. Also a couple of floor jacks and definitely use up all your available fuel as much as possible. Get it below a quarter, about an eighth of a tank is perfect. 
uh, a quarter of a tank still pretty heavy. Uh, so uh, do do try to use up your fuel before you go do this. There's some basic connections of the fuel uh, return supply as well as for the auxiliary fuel supply for your diesel heater or heaters uh, that do have to be disconnected. Those are fairly easy and some, some cords. Uh, the connectors were a bit on the weak side so it's pretty easy to break some of the connectors on the wiring plugs. Be careful about that, uh, that you don't do that. And then also when you remove the tank, one thing that was unclear to me is when you remove it, it's pretty hard to, it, to get the fuel filler tube all the way down below. You really can't. It's taller than the bottom of the van. This flex uh, tubing here around that tube, that rubber section, is meant to be flexed. And it, it seems like you're slightly over flexing it, push the tank away and just keep pushing it away from where the fuel filler uh, door is until you get that tube all the way below the sill of the van. And then you can pull the tank out and slide it, meaning out from under the van. You really need to have this out from under the van to work on it. It is difficult to work underneath the van. So that's one suggestion. Um, also, I um, did have a little bit of a challenge with uh, connecting the uh, filler tube uh, that's in the tank and I'll go over that in a moment. It did end up creating a leak and a suction issue uh, and so I will talk about that here next. Okay, so let's proceed with the insulation. Agile suggests uh, that you cut in a hole uh, for both the auxiliary fuel gauge as well as the switches that control the direction and on off of it into the driver's seat base. This way you can switch it on and off from the driver's seat base but also while you're filling the van. Uh, from that position. I did not want to do that. Uh, last time I cut into that to install a, a light switch or a light, it was very difficult to cut in that seat base. And so, and there's a lot of wires in there. So I'm taking the seat off. You do have to disconnect the ABS sensors and stuff like that, or, or the airbag sensors, I mean. So I decided not to do that. Instead, put it here in the dash. I have these two available switch ports uh, on the uh, underneath where the ignition key is and over here, and so I went ahead and cut in a hole. These two switches are moved easily, but I unfortunately had to cut out the plastic mounts for those, uh, but it cut in very nicely. And then also I did up, I found there's a spot on the left-hand side of the steering wheel below it, where I put my, uh, where I put the fuel gauge that they provide. There's enough space in there with a little bit of cutting of this plastic bracket behind there uh, to put in that fuel gauge. And it's fairly easy to run that from there under the floor or in through the firewall. Uh, down back to the to the tank. The fuel gauge and the switches and stuff they provide are, are great quality, uh, uh, excellent quality, actually nicely marked. Okay, I'm now gonna talk about some of the benefits and some of the challenges with this insulation. One is the fuel gauge where I placed it is fantastic. Same with the switches in that they're reachable from the driver's seat, viewable from the driver's seat, but also easily reachable and controllable from standing on the ground while we're fueling. That's the big benefit of this auxiliary fuel tank is it doesn't have a separate fuel filler, meaning you fill the main tank and you turn on the switch and pump from the main tank to the auxiliary tank when you're filling. So you can fill up both tanks simultaneously. It will fill or transfer the fuel from the main tank to the auxiliary tank at almost the same rate as it's filling uh, from the pump station. So that is wonderful. The other wonderful thing about this is that as your fuel level gets low, you simply just go ahead and transfer that fuel from the auxiliary, the 28 gallon auxiliary fuel tank into the factory 24 gallon fuel tank. You extend your range for about 350 miles to about 750 miles or greater. It gives you a lot of comfort, a lot of additional range to travel to more remote regions. Now, there were some challenges with this insulation. One is I did do it myself, and it was a little bit of a, of a more challenging project because of some of the challenges I mentioned before. Uh, one of them was, of course, that the I had a little bit of a leak that uh, drib, dribbles more, the way to describe it, from where the factory fuel uh, pump screws in. I did not get that set right. It's got a little kind of like a recessed uh, slot to uh, align those into the fuel tank and I did not quite get that all the way down in there, not realizing it. And there's also an O-ring that got a little jar uh, that has a flat ridge on one side and it has to be to the inside of that big a circular donut that it screws onto. I, uh, that got a little, uh, it wasn't quite lined up right. So I had to lower the tank again and redo that. That solved my little drizzle. Until then, I had this issue with the pump and that it wasn't, it was sucking a lot of air and I couldn't quite figure it out until 
this. This is the fill pipe that you attach or screw on to the fitting on the inside of the factory tank. And it turns out that when I screwed it on, it had a slightly misthread uh, there that I, I thought it had it tight, but it wasn't actually tight. And so consequently, it actually unscrewed and fell off inside the factory fuel tank. And of course, just fell down to the bottom. It didn't harm anything, but it meant that I could only suck fuel from the main tank to the fact to the auxiliary fuel tank. Uh, when the main tank was full and that was it only for that first minute or so that it was full and then it would it would it would suck it down to suck air so I had to lower the tank and simply re run rescrew that back on it was hard to see and do when I did it myself I did do the insulation myself because it was about oh about a fifteen sixteen hundred dollar savings to do it myself um, I also found that the wiring uh, here was a bit tight that comes from the tank and also this uh, uh, breather hose for the tank uh, is really short and so you just kind of bundled up above the tank and so when you fill that auxiliary fuel tank um, or you have a lot of sloshing like uh, if you go up a steep ascent or des descent you can get a tiny little bit of fuel that can dribble out of there. Unfortunately, Agile did not provide a long, a long enough extension to, to really uh, route that up to above the axle where, uh, or up to where the rear axle uh, differential breather is. Then that would really help prevent that. The other challenge, uh, or not challenge, but maybe suggestion I have, uh, is um, that they uh, really in the back here where these brackets are, it looks like they kind of intention they mis welded them either slightly below the, the angle of the tank or they could have made the tank a little bit lar larger. And I imagine it was an adjustment they had to make uh, when they finally built the tanks, uh, but they really should have fixed that in their next generation of this and or even their second uh, version of it. And also they could have made the tank a little bit longer um, in the back, a little bit, it doesn't have to angle up so quickly as it still ends way above the factory rear hitch or the bottom of that. So I bet you could have got, like, they could have probably made this a little bit larger and got at least a couple extra gallons, made this like a 30 gallon auxiliary fuel tank. Nonetheless, I am very happy of having this. This is actually one of the best uh, uh, mods I've done to the van uh, outside of the camper conversion itself. Um, the extended range really benefits me on these longer travels through areas where there aren't a lot of fuel stations, long distances between fuel stations or expensive fuel, or just really where I want to get out in the remote areas uh, and I can now do it comfortably, whereas there was trips I wouldn't have taken prior to having this tank installed uh, because it was about 300 miles on very remote regions without any ability to refuel. And this is a wonderful addition to have this fuel down below the frame rails, uh, down the gravity's down low. There's no additional fuel tanks to fill up. They have to manage, um, and so it all just comes out of one fuel tank. It's it's a wonderful addition. I highly recommend it. There are other uh, agile uh, aftermarket fuel tanks, and from others that are available. Uh, some that don't go where this most where that don't go where the spare tire is. So if you don't want to relocate that, you can choose one of the other ones. This one worked out well for me based on the other water tanks and batteries that I do have installed or need. So with that, get out and adventure, enjoy the remote places, and enjoy your vehicle, your van, and have fun, happy adventures. And certainly do subscribe and I'll provide some more updates on other mods in my camper van conversion uh, on my next videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.